Hello and welcome friends, welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens. Today's episode will be a quite special one because we are going to take a look at the design evolution of the iconic Caveco Dia German fountain pen. I will limit myself to only the models that I have in my collection but uh, I think that uh, they spread across uh, 1930s, 1940s and 1950s and even the beginning of the 1960s. So I think it will be an interesting comparison of one of the most interesting lines delivered by Caveco of course, I'm talking about Caveco Dia, but uh, also they are famous for the Caveco Sport. So I have here all the lineup of the Caveco Dias, and we will start from the 1930s, like I told you, and uh, ending with the 1961. I'm certain that this is from 1961 because I have the receipt of this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. As a comparison, guys, I also have here a modern Caveco Sport just to, to give you a perspective on all of them. So, guys, you probably can see they have uh, approximately the same dimensions. Of course, some of them are lady-sized fountain pens from the app, and some of them are bigger and let's start with this one i uh, have here a uh, caveco dia as you can see thermically imprinted on this beautiful beautiful celluloid and the model is 87 a let me show you to you also thermically engraved at the end of the barrel and also Thermically engraved, we have the size of the nib, EF nib. So I have identified this fountain pen from, from the 1930s and I think it's from 1939. As you can see, a simple, simple design. What is interesting, we have this rubber material and I know it's a hard rubber because it changed its color so this is celluloid and this i believe in this lighting you can see the difference it is a dark dark brown color so i know that this is hard rubber interesting on this model we don't have the logo but we have engraved on the clip caveco and this particular model unfortunately it doesn't have its original nib it is a replacement nib a nib made in romania by flaro a steel gold plated nib so this is a replacement nib guys but the design is uh, remember the design is in this shape of course a piston filler let me see Yes, a piston filler with um, a fake cap, like I I uh, named this piece, and with an ink window. So, 1939, guys. Now we move on to the next model, also from the 1930s. And uh, this, guys, it is uh, also a Caveco Dia as you can see and we have the model 85 and the size of the nib F. The difference between this model and the other model is uh, quite quite noticeable so this is a little bit larger and uh, this model the 85 model has a different ending of the cap and we can see here if we zoom on it the Caveco logo surrounded 
with uh, that uh, circle in waves. So Caveco logo. Again, like the previous model, we have Caveco engraved on the clip, a beautiful looking clip, nicely ornated. Again, we have the same fake cap. And again, we have a ink window, and I hope you can see it in this lighting, guys. Let me see if this model has the original nib. And unfortunately not, it is also a replacement nib. Nickel chroma iridium point, no logo of the Caveco. Because also Caveco used uh, this uh, cheap materials during wartime when uh, gold nibs uh, or the gold material was uh, scarce and was considered a strategic material. So no Caveco imprint on it. I believe it is also a replacement nib, but it's not relevant to this video because this video focuses on the evolution of the design. Next I have for you a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. One of my latest acquisitions. And as you can see, it is in this small, small size. It is a lady fountain pen. This particular fountain pen is also a Caveco Dia, but the name imprinted on the barrel might fool you because we have a Caveco Diaphragm. And you must know the Caveco Diaphragm was the name of the Caveco that was exported and sold in Spain. This particular version is the second version of the Dia fountain pen. It was produced roughly between 1938 and 1954. I placed this beautiful, beautiful celluloid fountain pen on a Facebook group. And one of the gentlemen on the Facebook group um, wrote that in Spanish language, Dia means day or transparent. But in German, the meaning of dia will be translated as diafano or transparent. So one of the marketing, let's say, um, strategies of promoting a German fountain pen on the Spanish market. This model, as you can see, is a 83-6 and 83 tells us we have the smallest size, the lady size, and 6-6, six, uh, six six, so that 6 at the end, it uh, reveals to us this beautiful material, this pearl, pearl blue material. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece. Again, as we see on the previous models, we have the same uh, ending of the cap, and the same logo let me focus on the on them to see we have the same logo and even the same the same clip this time guys i have another blind cap another piston filler with a nice looking ink window this time i can show you the original nib a wonderful, wonderful Caveco 14 karat 585 nib. This is a quite flexible nib. I hope you can see. And a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piece in my collection. Interesting, maybe you are asking what is this number here, 114. Well, again, this is a mystery and it was solved, <laughs> not solved, but... Um, enlightened by a Facebook member of the group and the, he told me that these numbers are found of ma on many Caveco pens. It is said that they are production numbers with no relations to model, nib, size or color. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Of course, if you know the meaning of this number, please leave it in the comments of this video. Let's move on, guys. So we are talking now about a model made 
at the end of the 1940s till the beginning of the 1950s. Now we are moving on to an interesting, interesting model and with a wonderful, wonderful nib. Let me show you. So we have maybe a little zoom will be appropriate. We have a Cafe Cordia 803 with a gorgeous OBB nib, oblique double broad nib. So this model, I dated it from the early 1950s, but it has a nice, nice design touch to it. So the models before it, you can see they have uh, these endings. So uh, this Cavaco 803, I can call it a transitional model because it has the ending like a cigar shape, this wrong ending, but it still man maintains this uh, rather flat ending of the cap. Of course, the next model, which is also a Caveco Dia, but an 802G, you can see the difference. So if the previous models, the name of the models was thermically engraved at the end of the barrel, now, we have a transition in the sense that we have here the name thermically engraved but also painted in this beautiful beautiful gold paint so caveco di 802 g and what do we see a round shaped ending and also the ending of the turning knob and also interesting now the knob is integrated so let me show you the beautiful beautiful double oblique double broad nib and i want to focus on the ending guys to see what beautiful yes beautiful ending in immaculate condition this nib is 14 karat 585 another ink window but this time the piston is no we have also a blind cap i'm sorry guys I made a little mistake but on the next model this model 802 G the piston is integrated so we don't have a blind cap unfortunately this had a little bit of accident but believe me guys it's integrated cap now we move on guys and we reach the 1960s interesting in the 1960s we have the same cigar shape of the fountain pen we have the same logo roughly the same logo let me see yes and another interesting interesting element we are talking about the impact that the Parker 51 had on the fountain pen industry. They started a trend, the trend of semi-hooded nibs, guys. So I'm sorry, this doesn't have the nib, but it marks a transition from the open nib to the semi-hooded nib. This is a Caveco V3 in a wonderful, wonderful shape. And let me focus on it it has an integrated piston filler as you can see so guys this was a little bit of um, history of the caveco dia model they are slightly different designs for this uh, beautiful beautiful model in general, you can see that the Caveco Dia was a larger model than the Caveco Sport. This is a roughly comparison between a model from early 1950s and this model from 2015, I believe. But you can see that the Caveco Dia, although this is the smallest model of the Caveco Dia intended for ladies, it is much a little bit larger than a classic Caveco Sport. 
Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of different, different generations of uh, Cafe Codillas. They are quite, quite nice. So you can call this the second generation. I don't think I have from the first generation of Dia, but those are certainly from the second generation. So between 1938 and 1954, I have this transitional model that ends in a curved way and a flat cap. And I have uh, other models from the late 1950s and the beginning of the 1960s. I hope you've enjoyed this small comparison between different uh, variants of the Cafe Codia. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. I will see you at the next episode. Till then, bye-bye and God bless.